Okay, let's start MIT Scratch. We're going to go over here to, um, uh, we'll use Create to, to uh, start a new program. But you can see programs that are already out there under uh, by pressing Explore. And you can see programs that other people have published. I load one up here. Now, I don't know exactly what this one's going to do. Uh, we can click on the flag to start it, and it looks like it's a little game of some kind. And what you can do over here is if you click See Inside, you can see uh, the code. And this has quite a few sprites, a uh, rather complicated uh, little program. And we can see just how complicated it is. We can back up. Click on create to, to create our own uh, little program. And so let's go over a few things on the screen. Uh, this is our sprite, which is represented by this symbol. This is the stage where we have our different backdrops that we can select. And we can change uh, backdrops as we go. Over here is the different kinds of commands. Uh, we would start with an event like this to actually get things started. Uh, controls, we can make decisions, we can do loops. Sensing, we can sense uh, colors and positions on the screen. We can make our sprite move or turn. Uh, under looks, we can actually have our sprite uh, say some things. We can add sound in. Uh, there's pre-recorded sound, so you can record your own sound. This would be like for drawing. We can uh, do pens. Uh, sensing. We can sense the position on the screen. Here we can do some calculations. Okay, so let's first select the backdrop. I'm going to go way down over here uh, and use the default uh, folder of backdrops. And since this is going to be a, a little race, I'm going to look for the track backdrop. They're in alphabetical order, so if you happen to know the name, you can get to it quickly. Click on it. And those are our backdrop. So let's select our sprite now. We can use this sprite or we can use others. And let's click on scripts and events. And what we're going to do is when the space key is pressed, we're going to make our sprite move. So let's drag this one out here. And notice that everything in this window is attached to this sprite. And as we add additional sprites and we select them, then the code that we add is associated with that particular sprite. Okay. Now we're going to do motion. We're going to have him move when we press the space bar. And let's change the number of steps to five. Okay. Now we can actually try it out as we go along. Uh, we can click on the... Um, Start flag, and now if I press the space bar, you can see he jumps forward. And if I hold the space bar, he moves continuously in a smooth motion. Okay. We actually want him to start before 
the start line. And we could drag him over here, but when we restart the game, uh, we need him to jump to that position. And so we can use a go to command and we can attach it to the start flag. And we'll change this to negative 45. This one will leave at negative 200. Now, if I run this, he'll actually jump to that position. So we can advance on the screen there. We can stop. And then if we restart it, notice that he jumps back to the starting position. Just like that. Okay. Now, we're going to create a finish line. And to do that, we're actually going to use the little uh, sprite editor and create a new sprite. And this takes a little getting used to, but the sprite editor is down here. And we're going to click on this one, paint a new sprite. And what I'm going to do is I want it to be a solid line. And I can adjust the thickness of the line by dragging this. So I'll make it a little thick. And I'm actually, because I want it to match that color there, the white color, I'm going to select white. Now, I'm not going to draw it at the very edge. Notice the fine grid they have here. If I draw it at the very edge, it'll wind up being on the very edge here, so we can't really see it. So I'm going to put it right here. Now, when I click this button here, this is a freeform paint brush. This one will actually make it a fixed line and make a straight line. And <clears throat> my hand is not super steady, so using the freeform, I'm not necessarily going to have a perfectly straight line and I would desire to have a perfectly straight line. So I'm going to go about here and I'm going to click and drag. And this gives me my line. Uh, try to make it as straight as I can. And uh, let's see, that's way too far to the left. So let me undo it. And we'll try it again a little bit further over here. Yeah, that's still further to the left than I want. So let's try right here, like that. And that seems to be uh, pretty okay. So we're finished with our uh, finish line sprite. It's gonna be a short race. And we'll go back over to our uh, sprites. And what we can do is go back to scripts. And what we can do is add uh, some additional code to here to indicate that he's uh, finished the race. So let's use a control. And let's drag this block here, this if then block out and connect it. And then we're going to use sensing to tell that he's touched that line. So we'll go to sense. And we'll drag this one here. And notice how it highlights. That means it'll drop in that space there. Now, we don't want him to touch the mouse pointer. So we'll change it. Notice that it gives us the choice of Sprite 2, which is this Sprite here. So let's click on Sprite 2. OK. And then. When he touches the uh, finish line, let's have him uh, give us a message. So we'll put the message on the screen. So let's drag this here and let's have him say, um, I made it. OK. If we uh, go back and run our program, we start, and then we press the space bar. We can press and hold the space bar. And then when he gets to the finish line, he says, I made it. Okay. 
So now we have to race against somebody. So we need to pick out a new sprite. So we're going to come back down over here. And we're going to select a sprite from a bunch of choices. So we have a bunch of choices here. Uh, we can have him race, oh, any number of these uh, characters. Um, as you can see, this is quite a number of choices. And these get into letters. So let's go back and um, let's have him race a uh, the dinosaur. Double click. Notice it adds our sprite here. Now we're going to want the sprite to start up higher on the screen. And notice that his script is, is blank right now. If we go back to our original sprite, that's where our code is. This one doesn't have any code. And then there's our dinosaur. So, let's give him uh, a way to move. So, let's drag this one out here. And we're going to have him move. Not on the space bar, but we'll select the uh, right arrow key. So if we press the right arrow key, we'll make him move. So we need motion. We can drag that in there. We can change that to five steps as well. <clears throat> we can put a control in there like we did uh, before. Uh, an if then statement. And then again, sensing. So if he's touching the sprite two, and then we can have him say something. And let's have him say uh, hooray. Like this. And when he moves, you know, when we restart with the start flag, we need to put that in to have him jump back to the starting position. So when the flag is clicked, we'll bring that out. And then on the motion, um, we'll do a go to. And we'll make this negative 200, just like the other sprite. But here we want him up. So let's put in, uh, let's say, let's try like 60. See how that works. Okay. So. So he moves. He moves. And so when he touches the line, he says hooray. Okay. Now, if we wanted to, we can add some sound. So, let's go back to our first sprite. And we can add the sound right underneath this. So we can go to the sound. <clears throat> and we can select play sound until done. And then we can choose a sound. Now, there isn't any real choices here. So we have to add a sound. So um, we go over here to sounds. We can click on the sounds. And this gives us a bunch of different sounds. And we'll select the cheer sound. 
you may or may not have been able to hear that, but we'll click that. So now we have this sound here. So now when we go back to the script, instead of having him uh, do a camp meow, he can do a cheer, right? And we can do that for our, uh, our dinosaur too. We can give him his own sound. We can drag this out here. And then we have to go back to our uh, sounds that we have available. And we can pick uh, pick out a sound. Maybe this drum one, drum one. That sounds pretty good. So <clears throat> we put our drum sound here. Go back to the script and there. So let's restart the game and our sprite, he wins. Okay, and our other friend. Okay, um, now there's a little bit of a pause in there, and the reason the pause is, is this two second delay here. Now, if I take this and put that on top, same thing here, I should get the sound just as they, uh, as they uh, hit the finish line. Right. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, we can add some animation um, uh, to our sprite. Now, if we go back to the sprite, to the costumes right here, you know, so that we have a second uh, costume form. And you can see if it goes back and forth from that, it kind of looks like motion. And so we can put that in there under scripts. We can um, Our looks we can drag next costume out here and we can put it right there so now if we start and run it again see it looks like he's it looks like he's uh, got motion now look how about our dinosaur friend oh he could be a dancing dinosaur He's got all kinds of them. Okay, let's see uh, if we do next. Let's see um, what happens with him. So let's do the same thing. This should be uh, interesting. So now we have. Uh, animation. Now, what we can do uh, for this guy here to make him go automatically, uh, what we can do is put a glide command in. See if we can find the uh, glide command. So put that there. Let's 
seven seconds. Let's make this one, four, zero. Okay. And then, uh, let's uh, have him uh, do this. Change that to hooray. Okay. And now he's going to move automatically now uh, when we start. Okay. So since we didn't press the right arrow, this script over here wasn't used at all. But this gives um, some uh, auto, uh, automatic, uh, so the other sprite's moving automatically. So we can actually go and we can change this like that. Start it. Notice he moves a lot faster. So we can make it harder by changing that. Okay. So uh, that's the end of this uh, uh, tutorial. Uh, and we will sign off.